Hey guys, it's an episode of Pajama Chronicles. I have had a wonderful little staycation here this uh, past three days. My husband is opening our trailer at the bay. And that's what I kind of want to talk about uh, today. Um, every year when I start the season at the bay, I go down hoping um, to have a clean slate. The things that happened last year should be put in last year and stay in last year. And we start fresh in the spring. That's what I hope for. Unfortunately, some things are held over. There are grudges. People still hate on me for things I said five years ago or complained about five years ago. So I thought I would just come on and say this. Some things you don't know about me. Because usually when I'm here on Facebook or on YouTube, I'm usually talking about things that bother me. That's kind of what the show is about. And yes, I may seem to complain a lot. But the interesting thing is, many of the things I complain about publicly are things that a lot of other people complain about and they don't have a show. So one thing that you may not know about me, which I'm going to talk about in this, this episode, is that when I wake up in the morning, I'm actually in a really good mood. Really good mood. I wake up looking forward to my day. Sometimes I'm so excited to start my day, I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Maybe because I'm reading a really good book and can't wait to get back into it. Or because I have some really cool plans. I'm a planner. I always have been. I'm not this kind of person that goes with the flow. That's just the way I roll. I'm not the kind of person that if I wake up and I go to brush my teeth and there's no water, that I'm going to say, oh, well, I just won't brush my teeth this morning. <laughs> I get upset about those things. And usually because I'm by myself when these things happen, and I only have my dog, I come on to Facebook and I bitch about it. That's what I do. It helps me to vent. Oh my God, the water's off. Now, I'm not the only person who gets upset when there's no running water. Everybody bitches about it. For some reason, when I bitch about it, Everybody hates on me. Somehow I'm the bad guy for complaining that there's no water for my coffee or there's no water to brush my teeth or I can't flush my toilet. Although I've learned how to do that when the water's off. I do know how to flush the toilet with no running water. I can do it. I'm a big girl now. When I go get up in the morning, the first thing I do is I brush my teeth, I have my coffee. I have a cigarette. Nobody can fuck with that. <laughs> My cigarette's light no matter what. Thank God. And I go to turn on my TV. And if my TV doesn't turn on, if the TV's out, yes, I get upset about that. I complain about that. And I've heard other people complain about it too. But when Paula Luciano complains about it, I'm the bad guy. How dare I complain about that? If I'm in the middle of watching a movie and I'm trying to enjoy my dinner, which I spent time cooking for myself, and all of a sudden on a beautiful clear night, the power goes out for no apparent reason whatsoever. There's no storm. You know, in a bad storm, you might expect a power outage, but not on a beautiful clear evening. Yeah, I get upset about that. I complain about it. And everybody else complains about it, too. In fact, I was at the bay one time when the power was out for 12 hours. I was also at the bay when the power was out for an hour. And there were people going, is your power out? Yeah, my power's out, too. Oh, my God. It's hot. Our air conditioner's not working. They were complaining, too. But when I come on Facebook and complain about it, I'm a bad guy. I'm hated on for that. I have been 
at the bay when the power comes back on and you can hear cheers all over the park. Everybody's cheering. The power's back. Everybody hates a power outage. And yet when I complain about it, I'm the bad guy. Paula Luciano is not allowed to complain. Everybody else is. I never get a pass. Okay? I don't get a pass. As I said at the beginning, I'm a planner. When I plan my day, when I plan my weekend, and something happens that my plans, and you know what? It's life. Every day something happens. But when I have plans and I'm looking forward to something and something that is outside of my control fucks it up, I get upset. That's how I roll. I'm working on it. I swear to God, I am working on it. I'm working on the fact that, first of all, as I get older, being stressed out about things outside of my control is now making me sick. I've been very open about the fact that I suffer from IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And many millions of Americans suffer with me. One of the big things that, that can start an episode of IBS is stress. I've had a fight with my husband. And I've been feeling good all day. I have a fight with my husband or something happens. I get stressed. I get an episode of IBS. And I don't like feeling that way. So I am trying to lower my stress level by trying to condition myself to control what I can and to not freak out about things I can't control, especially things that are not life threatening. I am not going to die if the water's not on. I'm not going to die if the TV doesn't work. I'm not going to die if the power goes out for several hours. I won't die. And now what I'm trying to do is make plans because I'm a planner. What am I going to do if the power, when the power goes out? Because every year it goes out at some point down at the bay. What will I do? And what I have to start doing is, first of all, calm the fuck down. I'm not going to die. My dog's not going to die. The house is fine. It can't catch fire because there's no power. And just figure out something else to do. Now, in the heat of summer, and the power goes out, and the air conditioning goes with it, it is bare. You can't sleep. I can't sleep if I'm sweating. That's why I'm so thankful I was born in the era of air conditioning. Because at my age, if it's hot, I cannot sleep. But if the power goes out, as it did last summer, on beautiful summer nights, all I have to do is go out on my deck with a pillow and a blankie and go to sleep on my deck. I can try that. I have a lantern. I can turn on my lantern and just read a book and chill. Just try to relax. Open up all my windows, have some air coming in. If anybody knows, by the way, I am looking for this, and I'm sure they make it. I'll have to Google it. But a chargeable fan, that would really be great. Because sometimes there's always a breeze down at the bay. You open up all the windows when there's no air conditioning. And if you can have a fan blowing on you, the heat doesn't overwhelm you. But fans need to be plugged in. They need electricity. I'm wondering if they make a chargeable fan, one that runs on battery. I could get me one of those. I'd be a happy camper. The other thing I always worry about, of course, is my food in my refrigerator. Because I have a small trailer, I have two very small, basically dorm-sized refrigerators. And they defrost within an hour of having no power. And that means I've got water dripping from the freezer part onto all of the food that's in the refrigerator. So I do worry about losing food. So my plan 
I'm a planner, is just don't keep too much food in those refrigerators. The big one that we have outside in the shed, that one can go 12 hours without any problems. No food spoilage. So again, plan. I have taken to freezing little glad baggies of water and throwing them in the freezer and freezing them. If the power goes out, that's my go-to. I can bring one of those baggies into the small refrigerators, put them in. That'll keep the, the food safe and cold. I hate throwing away food. I hate wasting food. <clears throat> so I really do want to try for my health and for my safety. Because I'll tell you, last summer, some of the hatred against me uh, turned really ugly to the point where um, people were actually threatening me physically and threatening my property. And I think that's a little above and beyond. That's crossing the line that, again, you don't have to like me or invite me to your house, but you don't need to start messing with somebody's private property. And you don't absolutely, you have to remember, it's not just me that lives there. Most people love my husband. I think everybody loves my husband. He's very lovable. And, of course, I have my innocent dog always with me. So you can hate me as much as you want. That really doesn't bother me because I'm kind of used to it. But please, if you hate me, hate me. Don't talk to me. Don't invite me to your house. I really don't give a shit. But please don't do anything that could put me, my husband, or my dog in jeopardy. Don't do something that you could be prosecuted for criminally. Because believe me, I have no problem prosecuting anybody. I'm not one of these people that say, oh, well, they were drunk. Yeah, that's a big thing. Give someone a pass because they're drunk. No, I don't do that. Basically, if you fuck with me or my property, you put me or my family in danger, you're getting arrested and I am pressing charges. I'm not going to be one of those people that says, oh, well, they're our neighbors, they're a community. No, no. See, I will press charges. I will show up and testify. You'll go to jail or you will pay a lot of money. So don't put yourself in that position. Just don't like me. I don't care. You don't have to like me. Just don't threaten my property. Don't mess with my property. And don't mess with my friend's property either. That's really not cool. Putting somebody's life in danger by putting water in their gas tank or loosening lug nuts on their golf carts, that is so high school, so immature, and it's dangerous. I like to think that whether someone likes me or dislikes me, everybody has some good in them. I'm the kind of person that if somebody who I know hates my guts needs help and we're there, we will help them. We've done it. We've done it. We actually called when someone's uh, water was spouting. They sprung a leak and the person that owned that trailer had hated on me and I had a unfriend and blocked them on Facebook, but we called the office and said, hey, they've got a leak. We did that to protect their property. We didn't have to. We could have said, oh, well, she was so rude to me on Facebook. Let's just let her find out for herself that her, her trailer sprung a leak. But we didn't do that. We're not those kind of people. We'll help anybody who needs it anytime they need it. Whether we like them or they like us, it doesn't matter. If you need help, the Lucianos are always there to help. But talking about this drunk pass that people get, it is kind of funny because I never get a pass. Anytime I make a comment or I complain about something, I never get a pass. But when somebody insults me to my face, and they never do this in front of my husband, by the way. So my husband never hears it. 
And he knows that I can ruffle feathers, kind of what I do. So he always says, what did you do? What did you say when I say somebody insulted me? I'm like, I didn't do anything. But they're never brave enough to say it to my face when my husband's standing next to me. Because if my husband actually heard what some people have said to me to my face, well, it wouldn't have gone well. And then my husband would understand. But it's okay to say it just to me when my husband's not around. So that then my husband turns around and blames me for it. Well, you must have said something. Actually, no, I didn't. But then, then you get the thing where someone says, you know, that guy actually did insult your wife. Somebody else tells my husband he did insult her. Well, he was drunk, but he was drunk. He gets a pass. When do I get a pass? I drink. I drink a lot. Why do I never get the drunk pass? Why am I always told I have to sit with my ankles crossed and shut the fuck up and eat my food? Why don't I get a pass? Why am I told before I go somewhere what I can and cannot discuss? Just me. And it is just me because I'm going to tell you something. I want to live in peace. I want to relax. I want to read my books, watch my television when it works, and lay out on my deck and have a good time. I want to be with people who I consider true friends who have been friends to me since the beginning for the past 15 years. I want to be with people who don't diss me because other people don't like me, even some that they consider their friends. I don't like people telling me who I can be friends with. If you're friends with this person, we don't want you around us. Fine. You don't tell me who my friends are. And there are many people down at the Bay who have stayed friends with me even when everybody else was hating on me. Those are the people I want to be around and hang out with. The people who always include me and don't tell me how to dress or how to behave when I'm in their presence. And that's fine. You don't have to like me. But I will say this. I'm supposed to give a pass to anyone who insults me. But the second I say I voted for Hillary Clinton, now remember, I never put a Hillary Clinton flyer or poster or advertisement on my property. But I drove around with Trump and Make America Great Again all over the park. I see the Confederate flag flying. Can't control it. It's legal. Can't say anything about it. But I don't like it. But I don't say anything. I have to give those people a pass. They're allowed to do that. But when I, in a public place, in a party or whatever, say I voted for Hillary and I really don't like Donald Trump, well, I'm evil incarnate. I'm hated on but then I get to listen to someone return with, I am so glad that that nigger, Obama, that Muslim nigger isn't running my country anymore. Oh yeah, it's been said to me at a party. But I have to give that person a pass because after all, they were drinking. So, hey, here's what I want for the 2019 summer season. If you don't like me, don't talk to me. You don't want me in your house, don't invite me in your house. I'm not forcing my way in. Just leave me alone. And my goal for this season, and I'm working very hard, is that I'm going to leave everybody else alone too. If your kids are driving a golf cart, you let your eight-year-old drive the golf cart illegally, your kid gets killed, I will be sad, but it's not my problem. That's your problem. You're the one going to jail for child neglect, not me. And if your child, God forbid, is driving the golf cart and destroys property that is my property, then I'm going to have to sue you. 
But until that happens, it's none of my business. So let your kids drive the golf cart. It's against the law. You're teaching them to break the law. They know it's against the law. But it's not my problem. And I am no longer going to stress out about that. None of my business. I really wish that you would train your children and teach them that private property is private property. Because they really, I have the right to say that your kids are not supposed to be on my property unless I invite them to come onto my property. And that's in the rules too, by the way. It's been in the newsletter. Your children are not supposed to be running across other people's lawns. That's why we have the walking paths. They're not supposed to be running up to people's dogs when they're out minding their own business on their property and getting their face in the dog's face. So just teach your children some respect about private property and we'll all be good. We'll all have a great summer. You know, we can live together as different people. We can ignore the people that we don't have anything in common with. We can not invite people into our homes who don't like us or who we don't like. That's cool. But at the end of the day, I have one right, and that is to enjoy my place at the beach and not be interfered with. If I am in my trailer minding my own business, I shouldn't see your kids running up and down my lawn. I shouldn't see them throwing balls around my car or my jet ski or anything else on my property. They have a huge beach, a huge playground. And a swimming pool. There's lots for the kids to do. And I think that's fair. And you know, the next time you come to me and say, Oh my God, I don't get this channel on my TV. Can you, Paula, call the TV company and tell them? I'm going to say very nicely, no, I can't. But here's the phone number you call. Because I get the channels. I'm, I'm okay. My TV's not broken. So I can no longer, and I've been bad at this too, I can no longer take on your issues and make them mine. Because it causes me stress. You don't get channel 60, and I do. Well, then you call the company and ask, tell them that you don't get channel 60. It's not my problem. I'm not there at Buttonwood to... Take care of all of your issues. I'm really not. So the next time your cable's out or your internet's out or something's wrong and you think that I will stand up for you and take care of it for you, no. See, you got to grow your big boy pants, put on your big boy pants and take care of it yourself. Not my problem. Many of the fights I have been in at the bay have occurred because I have made somebody else's issue mine. Can't do it anymore. I am at the bay for one reason. To relax and to enjoy my books. To spend time with my husband and my dog. That's the most important part. That's priority. I am not there to have the most friends or be the most popular or go to the most parties. I am not there to get falling down drunk every weekend. Because that just ruins my weekend because then I'm sick with the hangovers. I'm there to have fun, just as you're there to have fun. So how about this? We all have fun. I'm working on my control issues, not not getting so upset over things that I have no control over, but controlling the things I can. Like who I hang out with, which is totally under my control, and who I allow into my circle of friends. So let's all start with a clean slate this season. Leave the past in the past. Don't hold grudges on me because I said I think the, the pool should be open when the kids aren't there. Forget about that shit. Let's start fresh. And let's just let each other enjoy. 
the bay as we choose to. That's all I got. I hope you all have a great weekend. I've got some great shows coming up this week on Political Paula. Tuesday is going to start my program about um, the healthcare industry. And it's actually going to start with something you may not expect, dental care. I've got a couple stories that are going to rock your world. Have a great Sunday, everybody. And please remember what I said. Live and let live. That's my, my goal for this summer. And let's all have a safe and happy and enjoyable summer down at the bay. Be kind to each other. Give each other a little bit of room and a little bit of credit. And understand that we are all different. And yet we are living together in a very small, confined area. So give everyone a little bit of space. And once in a while, when you think I'm angry or overreacting, give me one of those drunk passes that everybody else gets. Even when they're being really insulting. Pajama Chronicles is out.